no one to you know get the definition of activation energy wrong right we know fully well that uh, the activation energy is the minimum energy required for a reaction to take place the minimum energy required for a reaction to take place so let's do 7.2 7.2 is saying let's give a reason why this reaction is exothermic let's look at our graph right uh, here we have the energy of the reactants and here we have the energy of the products right but then by definition what do we mean when we say a reaction is exothermic a reaction is exothermic if the energy of the products is less than the energy of the reactants right that tells us that energy has been released in that reaction right the energy of the products so we're saying that uh, if the energy of the products is less than the energy of the reactants then that reaction is exothermic because energy has been expelled from uh, the reaction right and then if vice versa the energy of the products is greater than the energy of the reactions that energy has been absorbed into that reaction right uh, it is endothermic so from this graph how can we tell that this reaction is exothermic like i've stated the energy of the products here is less than the energy of the reactants so 7.2 you just write it down in words the energy of the product is less than the energy of the reactants and as a consequence we see that uh, that reaction is exothermic let's move to 7.3 7.3 says that uh, let's calculate the heat of reaction right or the so-called enthalpy change so which formula do we use we know fully well that uh, delta h right is equals to potential energy of uh, the products minus uh, the potential energy of the reactants uh, this will be equals to again we referring to our graph right so we have already established that uh, we have our products somewhere here right so let's look at the energy associated with the products you can see it's 183.3 kilojoules per mole right so if we sub that in we get uh, 183.3 uh, and then now uh, the energy of the reactants uh, the reactants are situated somewhere here and the energy so associated with that is 400 kilojoules per mole right so minus 400 and then if you put that in your calculator you'll get minus 216.7 uh, kilojoules per mole right now we can go to 7.4 7.4 is saying uh, let's redraw the graph and indicate with the dotted line uh, the effect of a catalyst on the activation energy so first things first let's you know conceptualize a catalyst let's talk about it what's going on what is a catalyst right a catalyst is a substance that essentially lowers the activation energy for a reaction right a substance that essentially lowers the activation energy for a reaction right when you go to grade 12 then we can talk about a lot of things uh, with regards to a catalyst right uh, but then here we're just interested in the fact that it's a substance that lowers the activation energy of a reaction right so let's look at our reaction here initially our peak uh, is here right at uh, 2670 kilojoules per mole right uh, but then now when we add a catalyst uh, that peak goes down right uh, we don't know whether it will be at this level or at this level so all you have to indicate is that the peak will somewhat go down uh, so you can construct uh, dotted lines of this manner right and that would be enough right uh, maybe if you want to bring it a bit more down then you can bring it there or you can just bring it 
uh, slightly down but what we essentially want to see is that uh, the activation energy uh, for the reaction is now lowered because uh, we have added a catalyst 7.5 of Gadros law right in words uh, so it says that uh, one mole of any gas occupies the same volume at the same temperature and pressure one mole of any gas occupies the same volume at the same temperature and pressure stories and 7.6 says that um, if six decimeter cube of nh3 and a nine decimeter cube of o2 are used calculate the total volume of the gases at the end of the reaction yeah start by writing down the equation right so uh, we have nh3 plus uh, 5o2 giving us 4no plus 6h2o yeah um so we have six decimeter cube of nh3 and nine decimeter cube of o2 so what we usually do in chemistry we use the number of moles of one substance uh to find the number of moles of the other right and that always work uh but then with gas you can use the volume itself right with gas because the number of moles is equal to the volume divided by the molar gas volume and this is a constant it stays the same right so you can just move around using the volume right and that's only true if you are working with gases if you have a gas and a solid on the same equation then you cannot use the volume of the gas to find uh, the number of moles of the solid right you would have to convert the volume first to to number of moles but then in this equation we have a gas we have a gas we have a gas we have a gas so we can just you know move around with the volume as it is so here uh, not the entire nine decimeter cube of o2 will react so let's calculate the volume of o2 that will react uh, when we're dealing with uh, solids we usually use the mole ratio but here we only have gases so we're gonna use the volume ratio right so we're gonna say that the volume of nh3 uh, divided by the volume of o2 is equal to uh, the balancing coefficient right uh, we have 4 for nh3 and 5 for o2 uh, this is what we're talking about right uh, we're trying to find the volume of o2 that reacted because we know that nh3 is the one uh, that is limiting right so we're gonna have the volume of nh3 which is uh, 6 divided by the volume of o2 that reacted that's what we're looking for right so we're gonna have 4 divided by 5 uh, we're gonna cross multiply 6 multiplied by 5 uh, that is 30 and it's equals to 4 uh, volume of o2 uh, so the volume of o2 will be equals to 30 divided by 4 and then 30 divided by 4 30 divided by 2 is 15 15 divided by 2 that is 7.5 decimeter cube so of this 9 decimeter cube here only 7.5 decimeter cube reacts right for o2 uh, we have an excess volume uh, of 9 minus 7.5 which is equals to 1.5 uh, decimeter cube right so the total volume at the end of the equation uh, will be this volume of o2 that is in excess plus the volumes of the products right so how are we going to find the volume of the products we are going to use uh, the mole ratio right uh, like we did here but now for no and h2o we can say that uh, for no the volume of nh3 divided by the volume of no is equal to 4 divided by 4 so their volumes are going to be equal right we're going to cross multiply by 4 and divide both sides by 4 uh, so the volume of no will be equal to the volume of nh3 which is equal to 6 decimeter cube uh, now we can find uh, the volume of h2o the volume of h2o we're gonna say the volume of nh3 divided by uh, the volume of h2o 
is equals to uh, the balancing coefficient of NH3 that is 4 balancing coefficient of H2O that is 6 so we're going to have uh, the volume of H2O multiplied by 4 being equals to the volume of NH3 multiplied by 6 uh, so the volume of H2O will be equals to the volume of N h3 multiplied by 6 divided by 4 right uh, what is the volume of nh3 that is 6 right so we have 6 by 6 divided by 4 uh, 6 by 6 that is 36 divided by 4 so we have 9 decimeter cube right so the total so the total volume will be equals to uh, let's look at our equation on the left hand side right we know that uh, the entire NH3 is used, right? And then for O2, we have an excess of 1.5, right? So we're going to have 1.5 plus uh, the volume of NO, uh, that will be 6, right? And then now the volume of H2O, uh, that is 9. So this is going to be 16 0.5 decimeter cube so the total volume at the end of the reaction uh, will be 16.5 decimeter cube because we had gases we were using the volumes but you know that if you have a mixture of phases then you use the number of moles uh, let's do 7.7 7.7 you see in the reaction above is the first step in the manufacturing of an acid this acid contains 1.59% hydrogen, 22.2% nitrogen, and 76.2% oxygen. Determine the empirical formula of the acid. So empirical formula, right? We have 1.59% of hydrogen, and then we have 22.2% of nitrogen, and then we have... 76.2% of oxygen, right? So what does all these percentages mean? This percentages mean that if you have a certain mass of that acid, 76.2% of that mass will be oxygen, 22.2% of that mass will be nitrogen, and so on, right? So to find the empirical formula, we use the number of moles, right? So let's say uh, 400 grams of the acid, right? So for 100 grams of the acid, let's find uh, the number of moles of the hydrogen, right? Uh, the number of moles will be equals to 1.59 grams, right? Because we're saying that 1.59% of a certain mass of the acid will be the mass of the hydrogen, right? Uh, divided by the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1. So here we have 1.59 uh, moles. Now we can move to nitrogen. Uh, the number of moles will be equals to the mass, which is 22.2 divided by the molar mass. The molar mass of nitrogen is 14. And then if you put that in your calculator, you'll get 1.5857 moles. Now, last but not least, uh, the number of moles of oxygen. So you've seen that the number of moles uh, equals to the mass divided by the molar mass. Uh, what do we have? The mass is 76.2. So we have 76.2 divided by the molar mass, uh, which is 16 for oxygen. And the answer is 4.625 uh, moles, right? So we have H and O. And the number of moles are as follows. We have 1.59 and then we have 1.5857. And then for oxygen, we have 4.625, right? So if you want to find the empirical formula, you divide everything by the smallest number, right? So the smallest number here, you can see that is this 1.587. So if you divide 1.5857 by itself, you'll get 1. And then when you divide this number here, uh, look at this. Here we have... Uh, 1.5857 and here we have 1.59 so if you divide 1.59 by 1.5857 uh, you get approximately 1 right and then when you divide 
uh, 4.625 by 1.5857, uh, you get approximately 3. So your empirical formula uh, will become H1N1O3, right? Uh, but then you can just drop uh, those ones on H and N, right? Uh, so basically, uh, the empirical formula is HNO3.